second video. Hey guys, hope you're well. I filmed literally two seconds ago, first part, which is more about like the entertainment industry, but this video I will really focus on the music industry because a lot of things have have happened and I'm just trying to figure out to voice my opinion, see where this goes. Also, by the time you will be seeing, there might have been a lot more news development, so I will probably pop text here and there or I'll just put a clip of myself editing and adding more insights. But this is what the news I have so far. First news I want to talk about is the whole Taylor Swift, Beyonce thing happening with the US campaign and the fact that, for example, Beyonce had to literally prevent Trump from using uh, her song freedom at his US campaign. I don't even want to delve into the AI issues surrounding Taylor Swift because she has gone through so much and a lot of people have um, shared the news and opinions about that stuff but I'm really trying to focus on the music aspect. This whole situation of artists actually being able to prevent certain people from using their songs or their words it really shows how IP is important, how processing your own copyright your own trademark is really important in for your brand image yes ip is essentially there to protect from people using your word without your your permission but it's also a really great tool to say you know what i this is my brand this is what i this is my work and i want my work to be associated with certain type of situation certain type of people a famous example is the fact that abba is very particular with which artists they let sample their song and I think they they have let Sikrina Sawayama, and I th there was a there was a whole uh, like news news thing saying oh my god they let someone use their like they they gave the green light to sample the music to Rihanna Sawayama because you can actually do that when you own the copyright when you own your own IP your own copyright from a political standpoint yes Beyonce preventing uh, Donald Trump from using her song in his campaign kind of shows where her where she lies politically but from the ip perspective because there was allegedly no permission granted even if the event has already happened what she's trying to do is essentially trying to remove all the recordings of the event where the song was played being played it's quite difficult to say oh i don't want this song because like it affects my reputation so the fact that she owns her songs that she is the copyright holder of her songs um it gives her a great deal to say no i don't want i don't want this he didn't ask for my permission so no and she's able to do that second story i want to talk about is the fact that Coco Moko kind of hinted the potential return of cds yes vinyl has been quite the trend but i would not be surprised if we also make a return to cds dvds and blu-rays for movies since the aesthetic of early 2000s and 2010s are kind of the comeback but i'm trying to wonder if this could be more of more than a trend and actually be a full-on thing and potentially have finals and cd sale as a important factor of the commercial success of an artist um we now live in an era where everything essentially is a subscription uber is doing subscriptions um like we have uh, we have the music services but even an apple even an, an alarm has a subscription everything is a subscription to the point that it's very very annoying i also feel like the fact that everything is a, is a, everything is a subscription also dilutes our perception of how things truly value because our perception of money value changes i'm not surprised that concerts prices have gone way up but then again this must be truly a north american issue because the prices that i've seen for concerts in the in europe are very much affordable of course it depends on the artist but it is still true that in europe some people might say you know what I cannot spend 50 pounds on a concert. It really depends on the situation. But to see the discourse of people bashing an artist for selling, I don't know, $10, $20 tickets for the tour, and yet still complaining that an artist is selling over $300 for their concerts is very difficult because at this point, it just shows that people will still be uncomfortable no matter what the price range would be. I also think with this era of social media where everyone is encouraged to share their experience share their point of view at a concert people assume that the best 
seat has to be, I don't know, standing right at the front. And if you have to pay 400 pounds or $400, then that's the way to do it. Honestly, it really depends on the artist. Some artists, I just, I would be fine being at the very back, just jamming. If my phone doesn't even pick up on the artist, it, I think it would be okay. But I do think that sometimes people say, oh my God, a hundred, $200 is so expensive. But they're looking at the $200, the first row, right at the front. It would be a different story if someone's saying, okay, it's literally minimum $200. And I'm at the far, far back of the stadium, which is really expensive for me. That I completely understand. Yeah, both scenarios are possible it's just there's just one that is that would understand more than the other people also forget that it's not the artist that is in charge of labeling the price for each seat at a concert it is expected for the artist to make a lot of money during touring but even in that situation the artist doesn't have full or doesn't have a lot of control on the business side of them touring but i don't want to go too into much debt into this because i don't even know myself how i would analyze this an artist can never win and us consumer can also never win and also there was in the recent year there was an artist that said that um they will publish their last project on music services probably hinting the fact that they might do music but more so on traditional mediums and I'm trying to think what could be the possible ways in which the tr traditional mediums such as CDs and vinyls can strongly coexist with music services. So there was a first option of maybe the potential return of iTunes where you would have to pay for individual songs or the album instead of subscription. But this could potentially be the end of like of Spotify unless they of Spotify music because Spotify also is doing podcasts, but I'm trying to see um, unless Spotify were to also offer this service of we ask you to pay for each song. And the second option that I had in my head was to follow the cinema model in the sense that music would be first available on CDs and vinyls but and later be available on music services with the subscription but then again piracy back in the 20 and the early 2000s with Napster is not going to be the same thing with piracy nowadays the investment of technology of the investment of technology would have made piracy much easier much more accessible for everyone now compared to the 20 to the early 2000s and in this case and because piracy is would, would be essentially more ex I don't say more accessible but would be more easier would be easier. Does that mean that artists would have to come up with a low quality version on music services before it could be on the original good qualities like on the official release date? I'm just trying to think how like the possible the different option it could go. There there could be so many million ways in which traditional mediums and music services could coexist. Imagine a world where traditional mediums are heavily present, meaning like they, they make the majority of the commercial the commercial success of an artist. This would not only push artists to create more quality and meaningful bodies of works, even and the thing is back like when CDs were such a big thing, even if you like two songs of out of, of, of one album, you would still have to purchase the entire album. And maybe that could, you, you would give more time to actually like the entire album. Now you could say, I don't even want to listen to the entire album. I just like Expresso, I'll go to Expresso. Or I just want to listen to that song, I'll listen to that song. And you don't even have to listen to the entire body of work. It's, I feel like right now it is a lot of effort to just sit down and listen to an entire album. And that, and that would have not been an issue like 20 years ago which is so crazy going back to this like hypothetical world if cds and vinyls make such a big portion of this the commercial sales of music that would also mean that concert prices would also be more reasonable streams don't hold that much value you can have one million stream and are you making that much money probably not and as such the best way for an artist to make money essentially right now is 
through concerts, through touring. So that's why some of the prices are really, really, really high. But if we have CDs and vinyls where, as, where um, the artists could essentially make a big chunk of their money like from the sales of the CDs, I don't think the concert prices would be as outrageous as we know right now. But I also want to point out the fact that when we are subscribing to Apple Music, YouTube Music, Spotify, we do not own a copy of the music that we're listening to. Meaning that at any moment, if an artist says, you know what, I don't want this song on my catalog anymore, I just want to pull it out. We don't have access to that song anymore because they can. And, and that literally shows that subscription, this subscription model does not benefit us. Just like in the certain sense, it might not also benefit the artist. No one, I feel like no one is a winner in this scenario. But in a situation where the artist is selling CDs and vinyls, if you already buy that CD and this, when, the second you buy a CD, it is your own. You own that copy of the CD. So that means that if the artist says, you know what, I don't want this song anymore. I don't want this album. Remove it from sales. You would have already bought that CD now. So the artist is not going to... Knock on your door and say, okay, give me your copy. No, you already had paid for it. This is your, this is your own copy. This is good. You're, you're good. Unless I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure I'm right with what I'm saying. In the second scenario, that would encourage artists to be more intentional with the board that they put out. Which can also potentially slow down the cycle of music. And we would experience more, like in the early 2000s and early 2010s, this era of... A era lasting at least three albums instead of an artist right now just putting the album and then moving on to the next thing to expand on that point allowing cds and vinyls i just want to say physical mediums being the predominant way of selling and interacting with music would essentially allow artists to have the time to discover or experiment with new materials, new ideas via EPs or other mixtapes instead of this current trend of just releasing as much as possible without necessarily having the time or even the structure in place to say, you know what, let me focus on the album. And as I'm focusing on the album, I also want to do a little side project that can allow me to maybe see what else I want to try out or if there's if this new formula can help me with this new album. I think that could be a really interesting way because even now, I think certain artists are experimenting through an entire featured album. I think everything is being mashed together and it might be even scarier for the artist to say, look, I'm trying something new, but is it is in a full feature album. I don't even know if there are some established artists that release EPs or even side projects. What I do think is that some sometimes certain artists do singles that it may be a bit different, but they don't do they don't necessarily stick to that idea or they don't necessarily stick through that experimentation phase. You could always argue, well, not every artist has the money to just have a little side project and experiment new stuff. So that's why they have to do it on the featured album, on the big project. But if you were to consider my hypothetical world where physical mediums are the way artists are actually making the money, then that would essentially mean that they would have more in the budget to experiment. And also, even if they didn't have the budget, I don't expect from an EP or from a little side project to have a full-on production. They could always do it from home. A lot of artists are also musicians or with any, essentially with technology right now, anyone can essentially know a thing or two about Ableton or Logic Pro or GarageBand. So I always think that there's a way in which artists can have the time and also have the resources to experiment and feel more prepared to put out um, a big project that they're proud of and that people are willing to listen even if it is with a new twist. So I think it's also with social media, we also always need something new, something innovative. It can be quite exhausting for 
the artist. That's why I think also a lot of artists are saying, you know what, like, I don't like, I don't vibe with this, this album anymore. I don't want to be associated with that album anymore because they didn't have the time. They didn't fully have the time to, I don't know, first release a first album and then maybe like release a second album to really close that chapter, close that era before moving to something else. So that's that. But then again, I do understand that social media is crucial, especially nowadays for independent artists who may not have the resources of having to having the team to develop the sales of CDs and sell and do the sales of of vinyls. But I also think that if you're creative enough, and you remember like the the cassette where you could just press record and like da 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 da. And then maybe if you like make enough copies, you could sell it to like your neighbors. I think that could be really cool and like a really like I don't know. I'm say I don't say cutesy trend, but but I do understand that independent art. It's it's actually better for independent artists to be on social media and then um, to establish themselves. Maybe if they establish themselves on social media and then we can see the transition between oh this artist signed uh, an album deal with a label company when from that album deal they managed to sell a hundred K copies within the first week or the first months. We could actually see how their success is doing. And I would like to see how the music industry would navigate through these changes, through these issues. I would I would not be surprised for CDs, but then again, it's it's quite difficult because right now the best option is Apple Music or like those those music services because you know you're paying five ten dollars per month and that may be that might be the best option for people as they want to listen to as many music possible and that may come with the fact that sometimes artists will say you know what i will wipe my my albums my songs off those platforms if i wanted to and you're never really going to you know you don't really own a copy and that also comes with the fact that as you're paying that ten dollar that ten dollar per month it also means that there's also maybe I don't say ba I don't say bad music but it really depends with your algorithm and I would hope that you manage to like skip what you don't like and make sure you find your own niche or what is really amazing but then again I would like to see this comeback of the traditional CD and vinyls making being just a concrete um, component of the commercial success or the commercial impact of music. And that I think that could also mean that artists are being more intentional, meaning that also means that records are also very, um, not picky, but are more intentional with the kind of artists they want to pursue, which probably with better quality, but also the, the, person, the potential chance of community. You know when um, you hear stories of, we didn't have that much money, but I would, I would buy one CD, my friend would buy another CD, and together we would just see like we would just change the cds to make sure like we bonded for the songs and all that stuff so there could also be a potential re re reignition of um community around music if we decide to slow down the cycle of music with those traditional forms but then again i don't know i'm just trying to think about how the music industry can navigate these changes especially with AI and the events of technology and social media doing everything so fast so we shall see hi guys so this is a couple of days later no actually a couple of weeks later and I just wanted I keep forgetting to add a certain element to a certain news to my things but never mind okay so the other week I was I saw Amine do his own verse on 365 I tried XCX and I was like wow like he should be on the remix but in my head I was like maybe it might be over because summer is already over people are going back to work so it would be unlikely that Charlie would do another remix as you know Brad Summer you know it's like already September people are back to work but I was wrong because I checked my emails and I forgot that I was on the newsletter and it did point out that Charlie is doing a uh, it's brat and it's completely different but also still brat and essentially she's doing like a remix album featuring other artists on the 11th of october so now it looks like we have 360 by featuring robin and young lean 
Talk Talk featuring Troy Savon, Von Dutch with the Addison Ray and AG Cook remix. We have the Girls Looking Music with Lord, and we have guests with Billie Eilish. But it does look like we have a whole other one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Another eleven tracks that could feature other people. So hopefully there is Amine as a remix. Other than that, I actually don't know who she, who could she be doing a feature with. I honestly feel like the more niche, the better. People have been hinting that Chelly and Chapel Roan could do a thing. But yeah, the more internet niche it is, the better. The thing is, because it's the 11th of October, she could still be in the works of some, with some people, with some songs. So maybe until the 9th of October, she could finalize everything. But maybe at this moment, she has an idea of doing the full remix, but she's not done quite yet. Or maybe she's waiting to have someone on the track list who could be really like exciting. So I don't know. Maybe she does have everyone and she's done with the full remix. I have oh, Rosalia. I'm actually thinking of who were, who were at her party. Maybe Rosalia. If she wants to tap into that Latin Hispanic market, she could totally do that. So honestly, I'm in a and Rosaria are my two guests. I might be totally wrong, which is fine, it's okay. Let me shoot for the stars <laughs> and say Taylor Swift after the whole chart blocking drama that happened this summer. Um, so like, if they were to do a remix, I don't know, sure, why not? I mean, Charlie knows the entire industry, so I would not even be surprised. But yeah, let's say let's see Taylor Swift. Yeah, there's nothing else. There's no one else really that I'm thinking of. Or maybe she could have one full track with Dua Lipa. I know she did like a little appearing guest in Talk Talk. Other than that, I really don't know who could it be. I think that's the cool thing about like something exciting about the full surprise. So yeah, I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you guys next time.